Facebook, Zuckerberg, Fauci emails. This is like part three of the Fauci scandal. If this has not been the biggest release of the week, let me know what has been. But what we've found out in the most recent release of emails, Zuckerberg, not only coordinate, not only discussing with Fauci, but he's on like the he's on the Tony first name basis with Anthony Fauci, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And we got an email from Zuckerberg to Fauci saying it's not public yet. But we've got this thing going on on Facebook where we're going to prioritize authoritative news. We would love for you, government official Fauci, director of the NIH, NAIDS, we'd love for you to come on and do a Q&A, be the government official that we're going to use as authoritative news. Let's talk offline when you have a chance, moving on from there. The first, the question I had was, there was a lawsuit that talked about state actors. It said that, you know, uh, uh, public broadcasting was not a state actor even though they receive public funding. But are we not getting to a point where, at the very least, on this particular issue, Facebook could be deemed to be a state actor for the coordination with the state to promote a message? Well, I think it provides uh, further support for the Children's Health Defense case against Facebook that is uh, currently pending in the Northern District of California, brought by Bobby Kennedy Jr. And the claims that they were making uh, six months ago was that they had been targeted by Facebook in collusion with state actors. And they had some evidence, but a lot of it just reasonable inference. And now the evidence just keeps accumulating that there was clear collusion between uh, at least Facebook and Fauci about controlling the narrative and dictating what was allowed to be heard and said during this last year. And basically Facebook was asking Fauci and there was Zuckerberg, the CEO, the head of Facebook, uh, his pal Tony, giving him his mobile phone number. Um, that uh, the that was one of the few things they kept out. He also said something in there they still retracted as if it was national security information. I'm a little curious what that was behind that retraction. Maybe it was a conversation about that lab and keeping things quiet about that lab. Who knows? But the it shows that without question there was a great degree of collusion between big tech and, and the government operations that raised questions about whether or not they were acting as an agent of the state. Because the rule has always been the government cannot circumvent the First Amendment restrictions on it by enlisting a private actor to do its work for them. And I believe this is further evidence that supports Bobby Kennedy's case, uh, further evidence that should support other people's cases. And my guess is you go deeper, you'll find more. Now, incidentally, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to sing it. Do we have a, are we allowed to discuss the potential upcoming sidebar? Sure. I, well, I mean, I am. I mean, I, I was just, uh, it was up to, uh, I don't know what authorization you had. Oh, no, let, let's do it. It, it is, is it confirmed? Which one? The one dealing with the lawsuit of, uh, of, of the, uh, the, 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 the children's. Oh, I mean, I mean, Bobby Kennedy Jr. is scheduled for July. Uh, and this and uh, and uh, this month we have both Jack Posobiec and I believe coming up, uh, Mr. Uh, James O'Keefe. It's going to be a good one. Holy cows! It's going to be a good one. Now let me. I I, I want to bring this up. Viva Fry, would the right of Tanner Cross to misgender a trans kid extend to their first name or chosen first name? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we're we're talking about the name of a child versus a gender that a child. First of all, I can't speak. Yeah, those would be two different things. Because I, I don't think he's referring to these kids as Mr. or Mrs. So, I mean, he's either saying Julie or or John. Um, and I, I think that's – but what he, what he was talking about was the right to do so in the context of – against a public policy to discourage that right. He wasn't – you know, he wasn't yet in his classroom. So it wasn't in the context of his classroom that he asserted this. He was saying that, that he should have the same right that uh, Jordan Peterson talked about on what, four years ago, three years ago? I mean, remember when he first brought this up, everybody laughed at him. And they said, I mean, it's, part, it's partially what made Peterson famous. He wasn't that famous before then. He was just a little Canadian professor who was like, you know where this is going to go. They're going to try to make it a law to force me to say somebody's uh, chosen identity. And people were like, oh, Peterson's crazy. That will never happen. Here we I, are. I, well, and, and I did a video on it. I think it was Bill C-16, if I'm not mistaken, the bill, which was amending the criminal code to add as aggravating factors uh, gender identity. And just to answer uh, Hontes's question, I, I can't find it again. There's a difference between, the distinction here is not uh, changing someone's 
name, whatever their name happens to be. It's the question of someone who has religious philosophical beliefs being asked to identify someone as a gender that is different from the biological gender at birth. So you may disagree with the distinction, but it's it's biologically different in terms of name versus biological gender versus identified gender. So I don't think the analogy works, nor do I think it, it disproves anything. There's plenty of, you know, Bobbies or, or whatever. There's plenty of people with names which are genderless or gender counterintuitive. Um, it's not a question of choosing the name of the individual. You say the name Bobby is genderless. <laughs> well, I, 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 I've only, I've known of, I've only known of a few females with the name Bob, Bobby, but yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I just, I, I just went by Bobby as a kid. <laughs> no, I was and in my head. I saw B O B B I, not B O B B Y. But no, so it is the difference between not calling someone by their name versus not referring to someone by a, a gender, which by all accounts is not the biological gender; it's one they identify with, which might conflict with religious and philosophical beliefs. I can I can understand it. The other issue is not whether or not you decide not to do it out of rudeness or spite, whether or not you can be compelled to speak certain things. You can't be compelled to call someone by a name anyhow. No one can, I can't compel someone to call me David. So it's 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 somewhat different. And, and J Jordan Peterson raised the flags. We haven't gotten to that point in Canada. There have been two decisions where the police were sanctioned for misgendering someone. But I read the decision and I think it was more harassment, misgendering as opposed to bona fide misgendering. And I think there were other issues at play in that particular case came out of British Columbia. So it wasn't just as simple as saying, I'm going to call you he when you want to be called she. It was more akin to verbal harassment and coupled with other actions in the lawsuit uh, than just that. Jordan Peterson flagged the alarm. Uh, he, he may prove to be right yet. And whether or not he's right or wrong, at the very least, the issue is coming to the forefront of the legal world as we're seeing right now. Uh, but what were we on? We were on something else when we were talking about that. Uh, oh, it was it was Facebook colluding with uh, Fauci. The question I had is this: We know uh, it's Marbury versus Madison. Which one was the uh, the, the 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 corporate city? Um. Uh. Oh, I, I think uh, Marsh. I think it's uh, the, Marsh. The... Marsh. Marsh v. Alabama. So yeah. that is the standard uh, example that everyone thinks of when they say, "Okay, this is when a private enterprise gets treated like a government entity." Mm -hmm. The question is, we know state actors, if they're acting in their capacity of or colluding or cooperating or collaborating, whatever, can get treated like the state for the purposes of constitutional protections. The question is this, even in this context, hypothetically, would any sort of recognition or uh, determination that Facebook can be deemed to be a state actor, would it be limited to this specific question? Or do you cross a threshold and it becomes sort of corporate entity broad? It would be limited to this specific question. So it's it's the it's kind of like the, the the weakness of the MLB lawsuit against Major League Baseball was they claimed that because Major League Baseball has been treated as a, a state actor in other capacities because they receive state and federal funding, because their stadiums are often treated as state actors when their stadiums do something, because a lot of their stadium facilities are actually private public partnerships. That doesn't make them a state a actor in everything they do. And so it would only be in the context of when Facebook took an action, were they doing it as an agent of the state? So in the context of Fauci and other health related issues concerning COVID, when they took adverse action against someone in censorship or suppression of information or demonetization, they may have been doing so as an agent of the state and thus can be held responsible to First Amendment standards. But that doesn't mean they can be held responsible across the board. OK, so it's not like the. It's not the tipping of the iceberg, sort of like now they don't have 230 immunity. It's going to be right. this might this might help Candace Owens in her lawsuit against Facebook on the right. issue of COVID censorship. But Trump MAGA right. censorship, no, no deal. You know, you'll have to fight that uh, battle on a separate front. It um, highlights the importance of the Children's Health Defense Bobby Kennedy case going forward, because if it prevails, then they'll get a lot of discovery. They'll figure out just how often have they been acting as state actors when they've been suppressing information. And now that brings me to another question. Is there a certain threshold after which, look, you've been state actor on COVID. We determined you to be a state actor on elections. We're just going to determine you to be a, you know, a blanket state actor. Can it get to that as well? It most likely no. Uh, most likely no. But what it is, is people could allege it. People could say they were acting at the behest of the state. And here's all the examples where they've been caught doing so. And then lay out their evidence as to why they think so in that instance. And then that should help them get past motions to dismiss. And then they get into discovery to see what's happening. So it opens the door to a lot of risk for Facebook if this turns out to be 
a pattern across the board. 